So what is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back for another quick little channel CG video and today I am back again with the PT Cruiser GT. If you haven't seen the last video I've just put up on this car, it'll be linked up in the corner, but basically what happened is I was on my way home, I was driving up a hill and I was kind of getting into boost a little bit, having some fun, but I noticed it was only making like two pounds of boost. It was really, really weird. It just felt weird. So I let off of course and I looked around and I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on, but then I noticed my temperature was really, really hot and as soon as I saw it, the dumbbell came on. So the car got really, really hot. Thankfully I was on a back road, I was able to pull over immediately and stop and the car cooled down and kind of look around and figure things out and it turns out that the clamp on the lower radiator hose actually broke off most random fluke ever you could tell it was a little bit rusty but for some reason it just decided to give out when I was going up that hill and start just leaking everywhere towed the car home here it is and today I decided to make a completely separate video on replacing the lower radiator hose because it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get to so we're gonna figure that out and I'm gonna replace it and take you guys along in case any of you might be wondering or maybe this will help somebody out in the future I don't know but I decided to just go and make a separate video on it. And then when that's finished, at the end of this video, we'll be starting the car up and making sure there was no damage done to the engine. So the lower radiator hose is right there. I'll put an arrow to it, but you can see that's the clamp down there, right next to where the dipstick goes in. And it is very, very hard to get at. It's basically impossible to reach down through here and get to. And I'll show you what it looks like from up under the car in just a minute when I jack it up, but it is really tight up under there as well. What some people have said is if you quickly remove the grill and the upper radiator support, which is really easy. I've done it quite a few times in the past the radiator flexes back and forth a little bit and that might just give you enough room that you can reach in there and do that it's just these four little bolts here I think they're like a six or seven millimeter they're really tiny and then there's three bolts over here and three bolts over here and then there's this little thing right here on radiator support and that just comes off really easily as well so let's go ahead and get that done Alright guys, with that all out of the way and that kind of set up to the side, now you can see there's some wiggle room with the radiator and everything. You can pull it back a nice little bit to get some more room. But even still, I mean I can fit my hand down in there and stuff now, but the part of the clamp that actually needs to be squeezed on is in the back. So like I can't fit anything down in there to clamp onto it. But I just jacked up the car really quick and was just kind of taking a look under here just for the heck of it. And I suddenly had an idea. I can see the clamp right up through here between this intercooler piping and the motor. Well, my camera won't focus but you can kind of see the clamp there. I'll put an arrow next to it, but that's that's the clamp that we're trying to get to. I can see the part that I need to squeeze. So I'm thinking that maybe if I just remove this intercooler piping, I'll be able to get at it. I've actually had this pipe off before. It's not too hard to do. It's just these two, I think they're like 13 millimeter bolts right here. And this is on the turbo cars. I don't even know if you'll have this on an NA PT or like if there's something here. I'm not really sure how that's gonna differ, but you might not even have to remove anything. You might be able to get it up through here. Like I said, these two bolts and then there's a clamp here that you just unscrew. The other thing is the other clamp is a bit of a challenge to get to. It's way up there on the turbo. But I found from before that the best way to access that is right through here. You can see it like right there. You could pull the intake and depending on if you have a stock intake, you might have to pull it. But I think once that's out of the way, we should be able to reach something right up in there and just grab on that clamp and pull it down. And then the new clamp I have is this style. So that'll be a lot easier. I guess we'll find out. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly remove that intercooler piping and then we'll go from there. Okay, this clamp up here really sucked. <laughs> the way it was positioned was a pain. I wasn't actually able to get at it through the hood like I was hoping to, but I was able to reach up through it just the right angle and I was able to see it and get it loose and kind of finger loosen it. And if you position the clamp right when you tighten it, it'll be a lot easier the next time. But depending on what it's positioned at, you know, like this, when you go to have to loosen it, it could be a pain, but it is doable. I'm probably gonna position it like downwards so that I can like use a couple extensions to get at it next time. Clamps like this are usually not super tight. So that was handy. But thank Hopefully now with that intercooler piping out of the way, we have a clean shot at that clamp, which is a huge relief. But depending on your car, if you have a turbo or not, this might just be the easiest way to do it. You might have to remove the intercooler piping, but that's not really a big deal. Right, I'm gonna attempt to get at it with these pliers. I picked up a set of these attractors ply not too long ago. In the bargain bin for really cheap, they're these long pliers with like angled ends. I don't know what the proper name for them is, but they are awesome and they've come in handy already so many times. I'm just gonna try to attempt to pull the hose off. This hose is not wanting to come off, so I'm gonna send it and try to like cut a real tiny slit in it here. See if that'll help. 
I can't imagine coolant's gonna come gushing out, because I have a feeling there isn't really any left in here, but probably should have thought of that. Should we just send it and completely pull the hose off and hope that it doesn't pour all over me? No, nah, I'm gonna get a drain pan. <laughs> oh, okay. There wasn't any coolant in there. That's great. Right now I just gotta pull the bottom part of the hose off. Oop, yep, starting to drip. Oh, that's a mess. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There's the old clamp. Look at that. It just broke completely off. What the heck? Now we can install the new hose and I can position these clamps however I want so that they will be a little easier the next time and also to get them back on this time. The only thing is the upper clamp might still be a little bit of a pain to try to screw on, but can't imagine it'll be too bad. Alright guys, well I got that clamp on really easily of course, but this one was a little bit of a challenge. I ended up, I, I don't know if this was the best angle to do it at, but I angled it kind of like this. I was able to get this little 8mm wrench on it. Now that's tightened in, all we gotta do is throw the intercooler piping back in, which is pretty easy. Just tightens on there, two bolts here, and then the clamp way up there, which I think I can do a little bit easier than it was to take off. Yeah, there's, there's where it goes on, right up there. I think if I angle the clamp right, it'll be a lot easier to tighten it up than it was to take it off but either way we'll get through that and then I'll throw the radiator support and the grill back on really quick off camera then we'll add some coolant All right guys, the intercooler piping and everything is now bolted in and the clamps are connected. I already dropped the car on the ground or I'd climb under to show you, but basically I angled the clamp so that the nut was facing down and a little bit on an angle. It seemed to be the best way to get a wrench on it. I was able to reach up in there and get one on with a short extension. Kind of got to feel that out and just get the clamp on there the best you can and make sure it's secure. But I think we're good. The hose is secure down in there. Everything should be good to go. I just added some coolant. I guess this is now going to be the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and start the car and see what happens and Pray still that there is no engine damage. All right, guys, here goes nothing. All right, guys, I've been idling for about 10 minutes now, and the car is just about warmed up to operating temperature, as you can see, and it's not going any past that. I had the cap off for a while and was adding little bits of coolant, and it seemed to be leveling off a little, so screwed it back on and Looking okay now, and there's no weird anything going on. No white smoke or anything. I think the ultimate test, though, will be to take this thing out really quick for little spins, drive it up the road real quick, and uh, see what happens. All right, guys, I've driven a couple miles down the road now. Temperatures are still fine. I built a little bit of boost, and it seemed okay, too. It was actually building boost. You can see. That was like eight or nine pounds. So I was awful worried that this thing got really hot, but I guess it's okay. I gotta try to build a little bit more boost down here on this straight stretch of road in Mexico. Alright guys, well it's been a few days since all that was filmed. It was actually filmed the day after everything happened to the car. I just kind of wanted to get everything done. I was in a little bit of a hurry. It's really hard to film stuff like that, so my apologies if it wasn't the best quality. But I hope you guys were still able to get a little entertainment out of it. And if anybody was wondering how to replace that hose, maybe was able to help you out a little bit. And be sure and leave me a comment down below if you do have any questions about it. Because I try my best to keep up with the comments. Sometimes I don't get back to them for a couple days or a little while. Because I usually go back and just go through a bunch of them all at once but be sure and go leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about the job and since then I've had a chance to talk to some of you guys down in the comments and in the DMs and stuff and it sounds like some of you have had some similar issues where you've lost a bunch of coolant in the car and overheated and you still you didn't have any issues after that like with a head or anything because that would more than likely be the thing to have problems after overheating like that but I've had a chance to drive the car a few more times since then everything seems a-okay and I think I caught it just in time before it got too hot anyways guys be sure and go hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy this video sorry it's taken a little long to come out. I'm actually kind of sick. I have a cold. You can probably tell my voice sounds a little bit messed up. But hopefully I'll be back in action making some more videos here as soon as I can. Thank you guys for following along, for your patience, and for your support as always. A lot more coming on this thing and everything else here very soon. So thank you so much for watching this quick little channel CG video. You rock. God bless you guys and I will see you in the next one.